And while the number of migrants crossing the southern border of the United States has gone down in recent months, the mayhem they are causing across the country is going up. In the town of Aurora, Colorado, Venezuelan gangs have reportedly taken over at least one apartment complex, and locals are quite understandably freaked out and fed up. Have a look at this vision here. To explain what's going on and the authorities' bizarre reactions to all this, I'm joined now by New York Post immigration reporter Jenny Tayer, who is right now in Aurora, Colorado. Jenny, tell us what is going on here. Venezuelan gangs, I understand this one is the violent Tren de Aragua gang, are now taking over apartment complexes in Colorado. What's going on? Yes. Yeah, so from what we've seen in the last few weeks, which is we've heard from these apartment investors, we've seen uh, affidavits from arrests made from shootings at these apartment complexes. And then, of course, the smoking gun, this video has come out to show exactly what's happened, which is Train de Aragua has members in Aurora, in Colorado, that have been active at these apartment complexes, forcing the residents to live in fear and also uh, allowing persistent issues at these complexes uh, to uh, go un unattended because they've driven out some of the management and employees at some of these apartments, and they've had to condemn them. The city has had to condemn them. Um, they've been tied to several different crimes in the area. There were arrests made just a few days ago at an apartment complex here of four Train de Aragua members. Before that, there was a shot caller who was arrested for the gang. He was allegedly calling the shots for them. His uh, hmm. tag name for the gang was Cookie. In Spanish, it's Galleta. Uh, he was actually arrested with three others, now we're learning, who are also members of the gang uh, at one of these apartment complexes. Before that, um, as well, this individual was let go by authorities. He bailed out of custody for an assault that almost killed a man at one of these apartments. So there's been a string of uh, different crimes related to Train de Aragua in this area, a gang that really we know is, yes, transnational, but is based in Venezuela. Well, I mean, this is just amazing to me. Is it true, though, that the governor of the state, well, he seems to be in denial about this. Tell us about it. So when we've brought these different pieces of evidence to the mayor's office or to the governor's office, excuse me, the, he said that this is just imagination, that there's no gang takeover, that Train de Aragua isn't uh, in this area at all, that it's part of our imagination. But we've seen it ourselves through not only court documents, but being down in this area. Uh, Train de Aragua does have a presence, uh, and there is a threat to the residents living here who uh, likely fear retribution from speaking out. That's something that was actually cited in one of the police reports, that it was hard to get some of these witnesses to help identify the members of Train de Aragua that were terrorizing them uh, because they were so fearful, because they lived among them. Um, and so that's the situation we're dealing with. We're also dealing with sanctuary laws where you have federal authorities kind of at odds with the local authorities who can't uh, honor requests from Immigration and Customs Enforcement to detain individuals who are in local custody, especially these folks. And um, that's of top concern is not only the welcoming of migrants into Denver, which is now spread uh, outside to its suburbs, but also the fact that when there's crime involved with that, there's not a lot that the federal authorities can do. Uh, they are having trouble communicating with the local authorities. And so, you know, we've got this situation now where a violent Venezuelan gang has essentially been allowed to establish itself in American towns and suburbs because of the lax border enforcement and because of sanctuary laws. And now I'm also hearing that states as far away as Connecticut are also getting alerts about 
this gang. Donald Trump raised the possibility that they were deliberately freed by the Venezuelans to come here. Have a look at this. You saw in Aurora, Colorado, uh, a group of very tough young thugs from Venezuela taking over big areas, including buildings. They're taking over buildings. They're emptying out their prisons and their mental institutions into the United States of America. We can't let that happen. I mean, is this what's happened here, is that Venezuela has basically allowed these gangs to get out of the country, say, hey, go be somebody else's problem, go be an American problem? Absolutely, because they were a persistent problem in Venezuela, particularly in the prison system there. They took over a prison on a Tocaron prison, and they created an entire empire there, and they had to bring in uh, tons of forces to, to drive them out. And of course, on the other side of this, you have the Venezuelans that have come to the United States, some of those being TDA members, Train de Aragua members. Uh, well, right now, a big hindrance to getting these people deported is the fact that Venezuela does not have any diplomatic ties to the U.S. and therefore does not accept deportation flights from the United States. So, yes, these people can be detained um, if they're caught, but they're likely here to stay for now. Yeah, and there's just, you know, this, these sorts of policies are causing problems all over the country. Just very quickly, tell us about this other reporting that the New York Post has had, that in midtown Manhattan, New York City, three out of four arrests now seem to be of illegal aliens. I mean, this seems to be a really huge problem in so many communities that voted to be sanctuary cities. Exactly. Well, when you think about it, ICE is non-detained docket, meaning the number of migrants here illegally that are being monitored by ICE but aren't in detention, aren't physically detained, that number has skyrocketed under the Biden administration to over 7 million individuals. Um, so that is concentrated in areas like New York. It's concentrated in areas like Boston, a lot of these sanctuary jurisdictions, which, of course, these migrants know about. So mm. the word is out that when you're going to get one released because of lax bail laws in New York, that's one of the reasons. Well, um, another is that they're not going to tell ICE about you. They're not going to tell ICE that you committed a crime because the NYPD and the local jurisdictions are barred from communicating about immigration status to just, federal authorities. Just unbelievable. Jenny Taylor, thank you so much for your great reporting. Stay safe out there. Really appreciate it. And see you next time.